Good evening, hello and welcome. You're with the news today. This is your primetime destination news, newsmakers, talking points. Our big talking point is going to come from the Congress manifesto that stirred quite a debate. The Congress promising to lift the 50% quota ceiling if they come to power. Is quota a weapon for social justice or simply for votes? That's the question that we're going to raise tonight. Our special focus will be on that manifesto. Our headlines tonight. The Congress manifesto continues to spark off fierce political debate after Prime Minister Modi says it has an imprint of the Muslim League. The Congress hits back today, says Prime Minister guilty of hate speech, complains to the poll panel. Big showdown over an NIA team attack during a raid in West Bengal. Trinamool Congress MPs detained outside poll body, demanding action against the BJP, calling for the heads of ED, IT, NIA to be removed. Delhi Liquor Gate probe intensifies as ED summons another AAP MLA Durgesh Pathak in the probe. Delhi court denies interim bail to K. Kavita, the TRS leader, saying she destroyed evidence. Suspense over Rahul Gandhi's Amethi fight continues. Sources say the Congress will announce its candidates for Amethi and Raibareli only after the Kerala polls are over. Smriti Irani taunts Rahul Gandhi, says he's questioning Amethi's loyalty. Congress and National Conference announced their Lok Sabha seat-sharing pact. In Jammu and Kashmir, two parties will fight three seats each. PDP left out. Phase 1 of Lok Sabha polls to kick off on April 19th. An ADR report reveals 16% candidates contesting in this first phase have criminal cases against them. 90% BJP candidates declared karodpatis. Karodpatis across all parties this time. Vistara's air troubles continue. Sources say junior pilots again signing new payment contracts. Airline forced to reduce flights to combat pilot shortage. Air India summons pilot unions for a meeting. Big update in the Air India urination case from last November. Civil Aviation Minister tells Supreme Court it slapped the airline with a 30 lakh fine. License of the pilot in command also suspended for three months. Some relief for Palestinians. In the, in Israel announces unexpected withdrawal of its troops from southern Gaza. Palestinians begin returning to the devastated city of Khan Yunus. But our top story of the day. Three days ago, the Congress party announced its election manifesto. And its promises for other backward castes and for minority groups have become a big poll flashpoint. The BJP, including Prime Minister Modi, alleging that the Congress manifesto is an imprint of the Muslim League. The Congress has hit back, today approaching the Election Commission, demanding action against the Prime Minister's remark, which they say is a case of deliberate hate speech. But what really does this Congress manifesto contain? Is it really a manifesto which can be likened to the Muslim League? Or is it a manifesto that is calling for reservations for OBCs, SCs, STs? A reservation plank that is extended now across all parties in this country. And will reservation really lead to social justice? Or is it simply a political weapon used by all parties to seek votes? How does the reservation debate play out at election time? That's my top focus. Take a look at tonight's top story. The Congress narrative for 2024 Lok Sabha elections is set. The party has released its manifesto that is high on cash incentives, including 1 lakh rupees to the poorest families, one-time waiver of education loans, an apprenticeship with 1 lakh rupees stipend for youth under 25. But the grand old party's main formula to counter the BJP's stranglehold on the Hindi heartland remains a nationwide socio-economic and caste census. The party has promised a law to raise the 50% limit on quotas set by the Supreme Court. 
It has also promised quota in private educational institutions for scheduled castes and scheduled tribes and other backward classes. Dalitons' 15 percent abadi, 100 rupees from 1 rupee, and Adivasiyon's 8 percent abadi, and 100 rupees from 10 rupees. So, to ye badalna hai. Kaise badlega? Jati jangarna. दूध का दूध पानी का पानी उसके बाद इकोनॉमिक सर्वे धन का सर्वे हिंदुस्तान में कितना धन है किसके पास है किसके हाथों में है ये मैनिफेस्टो द कांग्रेस मैनिफेस्टो हैज कम अंडर फायर फ्रॉम द बीजेपी व्हिच इज हाइलाइटिंग द प्रॉमिसेस मेड टू द माइनॉरिटीज द कांग्रेस हैज प्रॉमिस्ड इट विल एंश्योर दैट लाइक एवरी सिटीजन माइनॉरिटीज विल हैव फ्रीडम ऑफ चॉइस ऑफ ड्रेस food language and personal laws it will encourage reform of personal laws with participation and consent of communities concerned as opposed to the bjp which has backed introduction of a uniform civil code the party says it will put down with a firm hand hate speeches hate crimes and communal conflicts it will stop mob lynching encounter killings and bulldozer justice the manifesto added that there is no place for authoritarianism or majoritarianism in india prime minister narendra modi and bjp president jp nadda have compared the congress manifesto to that of pre independence era muslim league congress ke ghoshna patra mein wahi soch jhalakti hai jo soch aazadi ke samay मुस्लिम लीग में थी मुस्लिम लीग की छाप वाले इस घोषणा पत्र में जो बचा खुचा हिस्सा था उसमें वामपंथी लेफ्टिस्ट हावी हो गए हैं माइनॉरिटी के लिए जिस तरीके से धर्म के आधार पर आरक्षण की बात हो रही है और जो 50 प्रतिशत से अधिक आरक्षण की बात है वो किसके लिए आरक्षण करने की बात कर रही है कांग्रेस पार्टी को यह स्पष्ट करना पड़ेगा ये मेजोरिटीज्म के खिलाफ जिस तरीके की रणनीति और राजनीति कर रहे हैं और तुष्टिकरण की राजनीति कर रहे हैं देश ने इनको माफ नहीं किया है और आगे भी माफ नहीं करेगी द कांग्रेस हैज मूव द ईसी अगेंस्ट रिमार्क्स मेड बाय द प्राइम मिनिस्टर It claims that the prime minister's remarks show the BJP's desperation. आपको याद होगा 1942 में जब महात्मा के आवाहन पर मौलाना आजाद कांग्रेस के अध्यक्ष थे सारा देश सड़कों पर था और ऐसे में श्यामा प्रसाद मुखर्जी बंगाल में मोदी जी के पुरखे सिंध में मोदी जी के पुरखे नॉर्थ वेस्ट फ्रंटियर प्रोविंस में मुस्लिम लीग के साथ मिलकर सिर्फ सरकार ही नहीं चला रहे थे अंग्रेजों को चिट्ठियां लिखकर यह भी सलाह और मशवरा दे रहे थे कि इस आंदोलन का कैसे दमन किया जाए और असलियत यह भी है कि जब से हमारा मैनिफेस्टो जारी हुआ है बीजेपी में खलबली मची हुई है बेचारों को समझ ही में नहीं आ रहा है क्या किया जाए टीम मोदी हैज क्वेश्चन द कांग्रेस इज प्रोमिस टू रेज कोटा लिमिट The party's government in Maharashtra recently passed a law to give 10% reservation to the Maratha community. Reservation still remains a hot topic in Indian politics. Bureau report India today. So is quota still a weapon for social justice or is it simply a way to gather votes? Is caste still the primary marker of identity? is job creation not quota the answer to problems like unemployment these are some of the questions we will raise yogendra yadav co-founder swaraj india and someone who's been involved with rahul gandhi's bharat jodo yatra is joining me siddharth yadav is bjp spokesperson anshul abjit is congress spokesperson rajat sethi political commentator who's worked closely with bjp governments is also with us i want to start with you yogendra yadav ji first because many believe that there is an imprint of the likes of yogendra yadav on this congress manifesto when you call for a caste census when you call for jitni abadi utna haq when you uh, effectively seem to suggest that we need to have an analysis of who has how much wealth 
and then based on that survey called for redistribution of income, there is a left-leaning Yogendra Yadav type of person's hand in it. How will you respond? I'm only going by what the BJP president and indeed the prime minister say, leftist ka hath hai Congress ke saath. I can only laugh at it, Rajdi. Uh, I can only pity those who don't remember their history. Uh, allow me to remind you that the demand for caste census was made by the by the Parliament of India unanimously as back as 2010. The demand for caste census has been reiterated, was conceded by Mr. Rajnath Singh when he was the Home Minister in 2018 has been reiterated by the National Commission on Backward Caste, appointed by the BJP, several state legislatures, including in the states ruled by BJP. So unless you want to give Yogi and the others the credit for something that happened in 2010 in the Parliament of India, I mean, I'm happy to take all the credit. No, that, so sir, that's because Yogi and the ji, the Congress, just a minute, the Congress in 2010 chose to reject the caste, it did not publish the details of the caste census, did not put it out in the public domain. There was a debate within the party and the party didn't go ahead and put those details out. Now, 14 years later, they say that they are embracing the caste census and jitni abadi utna haq. As per population, reservations will be given even crossing 50%. Uh, two or three things, Rajdeep, if you are seriously discussing. I mean, forget the silly questions about the authorship and so on. As I said, all that the Congress seems to be doing is taking its own ideology seriously, something that Congress has been talking about for years and years. They seem to be foregrounding it, in a sense. And uh, let me remind you that the foregrounding began not in the manifesto, not in the Bharat Juro Yatra. It began with the Raipu resolution of the Congress party. In a sense, what the Congress is saying is something which is ingrained in the Constitution of India. It is the philosophy of Indian Constitution. It is the ideology of Baba Sahib Ambedkar. And if Congress today leans a little more to Baba Sahib Ambedkar, I can only salute the Congress party and I can only salute and say, well done. You know, this is uh, the ideology. So of have the they country. woken up to it now? I, they, let me, have they woken up to it now? For the longest time, the Congress appeared ambivalent on the issue of caste reservation, particularly in the 1990s when the Mandal reform in a way appeared to suddenly change the nature of Indian politics. It's taken all these years for the Congress to now say, look, we are very clear. Caste is a primary marker of social identity and therefore we must look at a caste census. Uh, Rajiv says there is a Congress representative on the show. It's only fair that they defend their party. To my mind, Congress has not been ambivalent on caste reservations. What has what is new to Congress is that in the 60s, when the first OBC upsurge began, Congress was at the receiving end. Congress was not leading it. In the 90s, at the bundle moment, although Congress supported it, Congress was not the leading force. Congress was at the receiving end. It is for the first time that Congress is leading the charge when it comes to the questions of the OBC. Mm -hmm. On the SCST reservation, there's never been a change. On the issue of exceeding 50%, Randeep, in all fairness, uh, the 50% the limit has already been breached. And it has been breached by none other than the Supreme Court of India in an extraordinary judgment that they gave on EWS, which seems to be saying for everyone else, 50%, but when it comes to our children, it's all right. You know, you can go beyond it. All that the Congress seems to be saying is that, well, not then for everyone, if you breach it once. And incidentally, that's a question which is not coming only now. It's a question, as you know, it has already happened in Tamil Nadu about 20 years ago. It has happened in several states. It's only a question of national policy. And frankly, for a section of population which represents 75% or more, mm -hmm. if someone says limiting them to 50% is not fair, I can see the point. I don't know why other people don't see that point. Okay. Uh, you know, I'm putting up graphics of how Tamil Nadu broke the quota ceiling of 50% way back and it's reached 69%. I'm going to come to something more recent, which is Maharashtra, which is actually Rajat Sethi ironically ruled with the BJP as an ally of the Shiv Sena and it's gone up there to 72%. EWS for our viewers is economically weaker section. Yogendra Yadav referred to that at the moment, but it's gone up to, there are the numbers to as high as 72% reservation now in Maharashtra. At that time, I didn't hear JP Nadda or any BJP leader saying, why is reservation crossing 50%? Suddenly when it comes in the Congress manifesto, it appears as if 
the BJP feels that reservation lines are being broken. Your response, and then I'll go to the politicians. Well, uh, Rajdeep, see, essentially, uh, reservation is still relevant issue uh, across the length and breadth. Uh, Maharashtra, you would know, Jaranke Patil has been campaigning for the reservation. And though the, pal- the Assembly, Maharashtra Assembly, has unanimously, across party lines, said that 10% reservation to the Maratha community should be given, it has still not been vetted by the Supreme Court, and still that quota is not under implementation. Pick Karnataka, for instance. Karna- Congress is ruling in the state of Karnataka. The chief minister is sitting on the report of caste census because it is a Pandora's box. If he opens that Pandora's box, his government might fall because vocal ligas are going to be up in arms, the lingas will be up in arms, and his deputy chief minister himself will be up in arms. So my point is, it might be sort of politically easy at, at a detached, uh, big uh, helicopter level, you can go out and say that I want uh, you know, a caste census and the quota to be re-examined everywhere. It is practically very, very hard because essentially it is a zero-sum problem. When it becomes a zero-sum problem, it just becomes a political upmanship. But when it comes to uh, actual implementation, every party will struggle because it is essentially, this is where I think the Muslim League analogy comes in, that when you are trying to pit one community against the other or one caste against the other, the net outcome is never positive. It's like quarrels and like infighting. And we have seen how Maharashtra has come to a standstill, literally. Politicians are not no, able but to one campaign minute, into the respective but there is a, No, no, one minute. The BJP is in power there. My point is, over the last 30 years, the BJP has gone ahead and rewarded Karpuri Thakur, the man who pushed ahead with the Mandal formula with the Bharat Ratna. At that time, that is not seen as rewarding someone who today would be accused by you, Rajat Sethi, of practicing divisive politics. Please look at the hypocrisy. When the Congress does it, they are likened to the Muslim League. When the BJP does it, you reward the person with the Bharat Ratna. Well, this is what I'm trying to tell you, Rajdeep. Do not paint every state uh, as the same. There are complexities of every state. Otherwise, why does uh, uh, Siddharamaya still sit on the report? Why has he not made it public yet? I challenge him to go out and implement the manifesto in the state of Karnataka and let us see the impact that he's going to see or not see in the state of Karnataka. The problem is, you know, this, uh, wherever, so even the Supreme Court, by the way, has said that 50% ceiling can only be breached when there is concrete data on the ground which can actually back the claims of, of breaching that ceiling. It is not anybody, any political party's uh, cup of tea to come out and, and challenge the Supreme Court as such. So you're saying, have to you're saying it a caste census and is playing service. with fire? You're saying it will lead to further divisions in society. That's your problem. Am I correct? You're saying a caste My, my census... point is, if you come out and state this at a macro level, this clearly means you have not done your homework well. And every state is very different when it comes to, uh, you know, increasing the quota or speaking about quota because your positions will be far more okay. complex. And that the devil lies in the detail. And that devil has not been mentioned in that manifesto. That is my problem. Okay, we'll come to that devil in a moment. But Yogendra Yadav, you wanted a quick response to that. I'm astonished at the assertions being made here. Uh, just as Rajat Sethi challenges Siddhar Ramaya. All right, I challenge his party. I mean, I challenge the BJP. Let the BJP come out and say, we are opposed to caste census in this country. Let the BJP, well, the Bihar BJP has taken credit for caste census. Let the BJP say we are opposed to 69% reservations in Tamil Nadu. Let the BJP say that they are opposed to the reservation in Maharashtra. Let the BJP take these positions. The simple fact is that BJP wants these things not to be implemented. However, because of reasons of political expediency, shall we say, I will not say Muslim League because I find that whole thing so utterly silly being used in this program. If this is Muslim League mentality, I can read out to you passages from BJP's manifesto of 2009, which are worse than what, uh, which are, I mean, which are much stronger about the plight of the Muslims and what needs to be done, but then what the Congress has done. If that is the mentality, then surely BJP had Muslim League mentality in 2009. And let's not get into ridiculous things I, like this. Can I come but back? Let them let the BJP do. Let the BJP actually contest any of these. Things. Okay, let, let's come to uh, the two, uh, the BJP and the Congress case, because they must answer these questions. They are both spokespersons. Siddharth Yadav, you first of the BJP. Answer that question. The BJP in Maharashtra is happy to see the quota rise to 72 percent because you need to assuage the Marathas. You've been talking about giving reservation to the Jats in different parts of the country. 
there you have no problem and your your government in, uh, or, or or when you had a government in karnataka you had no problem uh, uh, with, with increasing reservation shares or promising more reservation now suddenly when the congress says we are going to come up with a caste census and jitni abadi utna haq the bjp is saying this is divisive even likening it to muslim league politics please explain this i good evening rajdeep and i'll definitely do that and i'll also respond to the questions raised by yogendra ji first of all a simple reading of the congress manifesto makes it very clear that probably rahul gandhi has not written it because the way uh, the smart way in which the divisive agenda has been put in uh, i'm not expecting rahul gandhi to be that smart but definitely he has written the part uh, wherein the appeasement and the muslim uh, wherein the part has been stolen from the muslim league's manifesto of 1936 and that is why the five anyayas of congress party are what very evident stolen? no no siddhant yadav i will not the on a sense in one minute sir i am very clear this is not one of those programs that you go on tv and pass uh, comments without backing them up when you say this manifesto resembles muslim league of 36 i want to know what is it because what i see in the manifesto is they are saying that personal freedoms of communities will be preserved and any changes will be made through consultation now how does that become muslim league of 1936 please tell me you are spreading fear this is fear mongering Rajdeep, had you waited for twenty more seconds, I, I was right to about to answer that only. Please go. Ahead. I started off with the Muslim League replica, the religion-based aspects of the Congress Manifesto, and I'll absolutely answer you on point what is being replicated. The Muslim League in 1936 asked for uh, you know fight against majority uh, uh, against the majority, and that is what the Congress Party is doing today. They asked for special rights for protection of the personal laws. That is what the Congress Party is doing today. They asked for religion-based scholarships. That is what the Congress Party is doing today. they asked for reservation more representation or religion based constituencies that is what the congress party is promising today in their manifesto it's very evident and i can go by page by no, page point the, where, by point no, where is the last two points no, no mr siddhant yadav do not for that be, no, for, no mr siddhant yadav i am going to be very firm you must not mislead where is it saying that we are against majorities please please be clear they are saying we will revive certain specific scholarship like the molana azad scholarship i will i will where is the specific against majority please be clear if i go back to muslim league politics i will have to bring back savarkar and hindu mahasabha and i don't want to go my focus is on reservations today as a political weapon or social justice you are trying to again do what your party leadership is doing spreading fear that this is a muslim league manifesto please show me one thing where majority is pitted against minority i'll accept your argument one point majority versus minority i'll accept your point sir I absolutely absolutely rajdeep if you wish so i will definitely answer please that. do rajdeep in the congress manifesto the congress brings out and says exactly that we will fight against the pro, uh, the majority forces and they hint of bringing back the communal violence bill no. the one bill that the upa government had brought in 2011 the the dreaded bill It's that false. we cannot forget they bring they bring out they promise that any they they promise by quoting the ncrb data that the offenses uh, the crimes against minorities have increased and they'll bring a special law which was the communal law the communal violence bill to the prosecute all other communities because even if you say anything to the minority of this country which is the second largest majority mm -hmm. but they want to do this for the appeasement of their own sake they will they are going to prosecute them specially and they will bring out a law they will not reform the old laws of this country they will not reform the ipc crpc and the evidence act but they will bring out a communal violence bill and they will write it down but rajdeep sir this i am very sorry to say sir you are unable to read it okay because so have you been so you are using a thorough reading okay. with no, an unbiased opinion you you have given seen, sir you given you given a point which i think deserves to be responded to you are saying you believe the way the manifesto is framed it will bring back the communal violence sir, bill and that according to, to you will be used me, against okay what i was saying initially okay okay you made the point it will be used anshul abjit respond you see the manifesto of the congress sir, in I some way what i was saying because you interjected and i was answering okay. your questions okay you made the point let him now respond anshul abjit respond if you what? give me 30 seconds sir no no well, let him now respond go ahead anshul abjit respond to to what you are hearing from siddhant yadav he is saying for example just a minute sir Let no, him no, respond. No, hang on a minute, Rajdeep. Yes. It's not about. No, 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 no. No, no, Rajdeep. No, no. First of all, this is not about BJP. This debate about reservations 
is bigger than that of the Congress party, the Congress manifesto, the BJP and this tedious thing I heard from him about anything else is bigger than this program. It's, uh, we have reservations in this country because there is uh, the curse of the caste system which has haunted us for generations. This debate, do not debase this debate by calling it some political ploy every single time. I know you've done that repeatedly as if we use it as some kind of political instrumentalism to get votes. Do you think that is the reason why reservations is in this country? Or is it to tackle the scourge of, uh, of social injustice which has haunted this country for centuries? which is humiliated, which is betrayed, which is cruel, which is unjust, which is diabolical. Mr. Abji, that Mr. is what is the Anshul problem Abji. here. Sir, the fulfillment just a minute. of the just lack a of... Anshul, Anshul, just a minute. No, no, that I, is my, why. Sir, no, no, sir, no, sir, just a minute. The, the history of your party. Why one minute, sir. You must listen. Ploy and sir, 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 one minute. I, I want to quote you facts. Let's stick to facts. In 1990, when VP Singh endorses the Mandal, brings in the Mandal Commission rep uh, report and says, I'm implementing it, the Congress's reaction, Yogendra Yadav may not agree with it, was ambivalent. Today, 34 years later, you are coming on this show and saying this is the only way you can ensure social, economic and uh, political justice. My limited point is you were behind the curve in a way and now you are trying to play catch up. That's the reality. You've realized that this is the only way you can win the votes, particularly of the OBC community, which has drifted in the last 30 years to the BJP. That's the reality. How terribly cynical, and this is completely unjust. We have been at the forefront for the fight of social justice ever since the First Amendment, even before that. Have you forgotten the STSC Prevention of Atrocities Act, Women's Reservation, the fact we implemented OBC reservations, the fact that there was women's reservations again? Look, the Congress Party is not infallible, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the, whatever happened, this debate, I told you before, the debate about social justice and reservations is beyond that of even the Congress party. I will not spare anyone when it comes to the fact of social justice. And when it comes to the, you know, I've heard a lot of things about the BJP. They have been a completely anti uh, sort of reservations policy. The things that were reiterated today about how reservations, about caste-based census. By the way, we need a caste-based census because we need an exterior of the society. We cannot keep doing lip service to this society and thinking, oh yeah, reservations, by having certain amount of reservations, you've paid your dues to centuries of old cruel cruelty. That can't happen. We've got to make a full commitment and a fulfillment here. You know, this is this old thing of how society will break up because of caste-based censors mm -hmm. was uh, reiterated and said earlier by Manmohan Medya and the RSS time and again 30 that it will break up society. Okay. Aray, bhai, the society is already broken up. It is a caste system that has broken the society. You need to patch it up by having a composite program of Sir, affirmation. Of 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 by the way, is what only are you saying on national it's television? One that you can't even for a moment think of unifying one minute, this country. One minute, one minute. You can't even for a moment Aray, think yaar. about taking this country forward. Ek minute, and I am saying, Anshul Abdi, Anshul Abdi, please put Anshul's voice down. Anshul, you made your point. Let let everybody have equal time. You made your point. Let Siddharth Yadav now respond. Siddharth Yadav, the point which is being made is to suggest that a caste census will provide an x-ray to society. Is the BJP, I want clear answer from you, is the BJP supportive of such a caste census? And would you, if you came to power again, be ready to bring in a caste census as you have taken credit in Bihar for? And your ally Nitish Kumar pushed it? Rajdeep, just give me 30 seconds. Rajdeep, just give me 30 seconds because very tall Please claims were being made by Anshul here on the debate. I just want to ask today two questions. Who sat on the report of Mandal Commission for 15 years? Who did that? Who was the one who said, na jat pe na paat pe mohar lagegi haat pe? Who said that? Who was the one who brought in card censor but did not release the report? I ask you today on this television. Why did P. Chidambaram in the on the floor of the house come and say that if you release the data of caste census, we will have dangerous consequences? Why did you say that? And one last, last question, if Anshul can answer here on this debate today, when we brought the bill to give the constitutional right to the OBC commission of this country, why did the Congress party oppose it? Is this for social justice? You can't even think beyond Gandhi family and you sit here and tell us about social justice. Your dadi ji after that, beta ji after that, bahu ji after justice, that, pota ji again. Is that social justice? Okay. And we have made it.
पॉपुलेशन You've taken a number of steps with defined. But are you uh, not worried, Anshul? An, Anshul Abjit, are you not worried what you are playing, sir? Anshul Abjit, are you not worried what you are playing with fire? No, no. Look, the look, point. Friend, just a minute, sir. What is your position on the caste census? The Prime Minister says, no, no, no. Hang on a minute. Yeah. Just a minute. No, no. Anshul Abjit, are you not worried what you are playing with fire here? The moment yeah. you release the caste census, the Prime Minister says, no, no, no. Hang on a minute. Yeah. No, no. Anshul, worried you are playing with fire here? The moment you release the caste census and the numbers are made public, every community will step up and demand their share of the pie. and that could uh, this is the fear expressed not as by by bjp or congress but by people who've been observing this that it could lead potentially lead to greater friction i does that not worry you at all the pr- the problem with that question rajdeep is again as i said that you are looking at reservations to the filter of political instrumentalism you think we are doing it for the sake of getting a few votes for this kind of thing that is not that question would have been relevant had this been the case had this been the end i want to ask the bjp my friend from the bjp the prime minister says going back to an old marxian paradigm there are no castes there are only classes you know some somebody says you know the the home minister has said no 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 the data is all false you know, actually mr yogendra yadav was right then they first take the claim for caste census then in complete chaos they don't know how to respond to our demand of a caste census and our guarantee okay. it is they who should be answering okay. what is their position on the caste okay. census okay can i r- rajan sethi rajan sethi the prime minister when this caste census is put raises the question saying i only believe in four castes poor women youth and farmers is that the prime minister in a way trying to avoid actually dealing with that critical issue of a having a caste census is this the prime minister trying to in a way shift the goal posts away or do you believe it's a way of prime minister showing himself to be more inclusive well i think any progressive politician should be talking in these these words uh, and the, you know it it for the past few minutes it seemed like i was sitting in a karl marx class uh my simple question is ki karte kyu nahi ho corona karnataka mein you know why such lofty talks walk the talk right why are you not doing it you're sitting on the data for past one year you should have easily released it dated a point and then go, went into the election do it in karnataka you can still do it because this is not a new scheme you have you've already done the survey the survey is complete the report has been submitted to the chief minister of karnataka but here you will sit and make all these lofty claims as if you know this big mega revolution is going to happen in this country sir nothing of that sort is going to happen be clear the problem with congress party is that the intent and their claims have zero matching there is so much of mismatch that people don't even trust it and this is the problem is the is the trust deficit that congress has which is is not working on if you want to make these lofty claims you can you have multiple state governments at a point in time and you still have uh, tamil nadu mm-hmm. where you can also do a lot of your experimentation here you are in in, in alliance with muslim league why is muslim league word so much of a uh, a negative connotation for you guys we okay. here there, in tamil there nadu there is a state no, 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 there i will say there so is a difference is, between uh, rajat there is a difference between uh, come on there between I mean, drawing yeah, a parallel yeah, with yeah, the muslim yeah, league of mohammad ali jinnah like and the muslim league in kerala you see this is my problem you made a fine point about karnataka you Let's made a fine point here. about karnataka which yogendra yadav should respond to yogendra yadav you see on the ground I, this is the point you've got a state where you've got a caste census ready but the congress itself has realized the moment we make it public it will only bring in more divided lingas vocaligas the uh, 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 kurbas all of them will suddenly see the, their demands will like, uh, increase exponentially that's the fear and therefore the my, my so called cynicism that all of this is being done before an election because the truth is the bjp has a large chunk of the obc vote in north india and the congress knows you can't win india unless you get that vote 
uh, Rajdeep, uh, first, since Karnataka is being bandied about, the fear is not that they, everyone would demand reservation, more reservations. The real fear is that two large communities uh, who think that their share in population is very large actually have found out that their share is much less than what they think it is. That is the problem. Anyway, let's not get dragged into Karnataka. Let's also not be dragged into the past. The simple answer, Rajdeep, to what you were asking both the gentlemen from Congress and the BJP is that all the mainstream parties of this country are guilty of not being true to the spirit of social justice for the last 70 years. We're not examining that. All of them are guilty in different ways, some more, some less. I'll not get into that. For me, I'm looking at present and I'm looking at future. To my mind, the most progressive thing to say about discriminations based on caste or race or tribe, etc., is to acknowledge that these differences and discriminations and inequality exist. Someone who fails to acknowledge the fact of caste is not being progressive. I'm afraid they are being regressive. Incidentally, well, I think you can my acknowledge it. You can acknowledge it, but are you then going to say, take the next step that based on that, uh, if a caste census was to be made public, then reservation would be on the basis of those numbers. That's the fear that some people have. That then you have opened up a Pandora's box. Um, Rajdeep, allow me to say that this is fear of the privileged. Uh, whose fear is it? Let's be honest. Is it the fear of those who have who have who are large in numbers and do not have their IAS and IPS officers? Do they fear such possibility? No, they don't. Is it the fear of those? who get about the same proportion in the resources of this country as their population. No, it's not their fear. The fear runs, let's admit it on this show. The fear is, fear comes from those who know that they have disproportionate access to opportunities, to offices, to money, to resources of this country, and who fear that a caste census would expose their privileges. It is the fear of the privileged. This has always been the fear of the privileged all over the world. Let me give Rajat, let me give, you're, you, you're making a very contentious a point. You're claiming this is a fear of the privileged who feel that their privileges will be lost. Rajat Sethi, Absolutely. you want a final word to respond to that? that this is fear? This is, this is a framing problem that is being, uh, you know, elucidated by the prime minister. If you see from these lenses, and if you ignore the other four sort of uh, things mm -hmm. like the poor, the youth, the women, that what, what the prime minister talks about, you will bring in those divisions. And I can tell you, no politician uh, will have an easy sort of a walk when it comes to uh, giving uh, uh, giving reservations, expanding that uh, that base in, in states after states. Certain states which have been, uh, uh, you know, have been deserving a fair sort of a reservation like Bihar mm -hmm. have gotten so. But you know, what do you do in Madhya Pradesh? What do you do in Chhattisgarh? You have absolutely made that as an electoral issue in the in the previous elections just a few months back. And you got a severe beating when in you make that as a sole sort of an election promise. The the proof was there, yet the Congress, uh, you know, uh, took this as a principal position on, uh, on its mm -hmm. manifesto. Let the public decide. Okay. And, you know, uh, there will be both the privileged and the underprivileged in the voting class, and the voting classes will decide. Okay. Let's see we, who wins. We, we, we leave it there. Is the Congress a step behind the times or is it ahead of the times when it calls for a caste census and says, Jitni Abadi Utna Haq? Or is the Prime Minister reflecting a reality when he talks of his version of what a caste system is about? And at the same time, the BJP will list out for you all the OBC ministers that they have in the cabinet is cast the ultimate reality of Indian politics is a question that I leave my guests and my viewers to really think about tonight. Thank you very much, though, for joining me on what's been a very good debate because there wasn't as much crosstalk as we otherwise have. Thank you all very much for joining me. I want to turn for there to the other question, which is, of course, money, power and criminal criminalization of elections, because the phase one of Lok Sabha polls in 102 constituencies will take place on April the 19th. Now, as per a report by the Association of Democratic Reforms for that first phase, over 1,600 candidates have filed nominations, out of which nearly 16% have declared criminal cases against them. 15 candidates are declared convicts. Seven candidates are facing murder charges. One candidate has also declared cases related to rape against him. 
On the other hand, 90% of BJP candidates and 88% of Congress candidates in phase one are Karodpatis. In Tamil Nadu, 97% of AIDMK candidates, 96% of DMK's candidates have assets more than one crore. With 21%, BSP has fielded the lowest number of Karodpati candidates. These are just some of the early markers from that initial survey of the first phase. Professor Tirlochan Shastri, Chairman, Association of Democratic Reform, joins me from Bengaluru. Professor, what are you? What is the big trend or the biggest takeaway from the first round that you've looked at when you look at both money power and criminal power? See, it is like the old story repeating itself. We don't see any improvement in the whole situation. And what is even more disturbing is that while the overall percentage is 16%, uh, if you look at the major parties, the percentage is much higher. You know, some parties have close to 100% and the, on the average we have about 40% of people in the major parties who have criminal records. Mm -hmm. So it is the political leaders of these parties who are giving tickets to such people. No, but are there serious are criminal cases? Responsible for this so are there serious criminal cases or are these cases Yes, where... yes, Rajdeep. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. There are, there are serious criminal cases. So I can kind of uh, tell you that uh, among the major parties, uh, we have, let's just look at the BJP and the Congress. Mm -hmm. So the BJP has 18% candidates, mm -hmm. that is 14 out of 77 with serious criminal cases. And I don't know whether the Congress is any, in any way a major party. The Congress has 9% out of 86 candidates with serious criminal cases. So we are in that situation and in the big uh, state which is the Tamil Nadu which has all the 39 uh, Lok Sabha seats contesting on April 19th, uh, we have 36, uh, 6 out of 36 candidates from the AIA DMK. Mm -hmm. So it's not a good situation. So These it, are all serious this, criminal cases. So would you say in a way the serious criminal cases affecting candidates are more troubling Karodpati candidates, look, there are lots of, you need to be a Karodpati today to fight elections. There the question is whether you are declaring your assets honestly or not. Is your fear much more that political parties are still right. relying right. on some of these candidates with serious criminal cases against them to win elections because winnability has become everything? Correct. So, Rajdeep, I would like to say something. You're right. You know, the Karodpati candidates are there. Uh, well, the public can t take its own call on that. But on these criminal cases, the Supreme Court has time and again said, and I would just read out one thing from the Supreme Court judgment. Mm -hmm. uh, that the Supreme Court has said that non-compliance by the political parties concerned to the notice of the Supreme Court will be treated as contempt of court. And the notice is that they shall publish prominently in uh, local media, in the English media, in the social media handle, in the social media, etc. Uh, who are the candidates with criminal records and they shall state in writing and put it on their website why they have given case, uh, tickets to such people. So our data shows that uh, we have filed three cases on this, that mostly the political parties don't even bother to either put out this information for the public mm -hmm. or they don't give proper reasons for why they are giving tickets to such criminal cases. So this time the Supreme Court has said that uh, they are giving notice to the political parties that they would be in contempt of court if they don't provide this information. I think that's an you know, the reason we uh, triggered this off is because your first details are coming in. We'll keep coming with every phase to you, uh, Professor Shastri, to understand the patterns emerging. And as you say, a very important point, if you are giving a ticket to someone with a serious criminal case, you should be putting it out, explaining to the public why, and you should have uh, perhaps uh, the willingness to be transparent so that democracy is enhanced. Professor Shasti, I'm going to leave it there today. We've had a short interaction. We'll have a larger program on this in the days ahead because there's plenty to talk about as more data comes in in those days ahead. Thank you very much for joining me. I want to turn though to one of those cases which has now stirred a bit of a controversy. In Kerala, the big fight in Tiruvananthapuram between BJP's Rajiv Chandrasekhar, the Congress's sitting MP Shashi Tharoor, 
Now, Mr. Chandrasekhar's income affidavit is being targeted by his opponents. The Congress and the left claim that the union minister fabricated his submission, a charge rejected by Mr. Chandrasekhar. The details of this contentious affidavit are now part of another political battle. Take a look. Before he became a union minister, Rajiv Chandrasekhar was running a vast business empire. But his affidavit listing his income, assets and liability is part of his nomination form submitted to the returning officer in Tiruvarantapuram constituency is quite modest. According to the affidavit, Chandrasekhar's taxable income saw a sharp decline from 10.8 crore rupees in 2018-19. It came down to rupees 4.5 crore in 2019-20. Rupees 17.5 lakh in 2020-21, just rupees 680 in 2021-22, which was a pandemic year. In 2022-23, the taxable income was 5.59 lakh rupees. Chandrasekhar has declared total family assets worth 36 crore rupees. The minister has no car but owns a vintage two-wheeler, 1942 model, Red Indian Scout, which was purchased by him in 1994 for 10,000 rupees. The Congress and CPM are questioning his submissions in complaints filed with the EC. Chandrasekhar has rejected his rival's claims. As I said, it's uh, election season, so people have to say what they have to say. It is the same disclosure I've been making for 18 years. Uh, it is vetted by the lawyers. It is absolutely accurate and represents what my assets are. Uh, if people want to speculate on uh, uh, I have hidden assets and so on and so forth, I always welcome them to go to court and uh, you know do whatever is under law possible. When you've got a person widely considered to be a billionaire showing taxable income of 684 rupees and you know poor me who lives on royalties and and writings and column fees i'm paying full tax obviously even i as a taxpayer would want, would wonder you know what kind of fairness is this and many people are asking these questions but for me as i said i would much rather face him and defeat him fair and square Shashi Tharoor, who is contesting against Chandrasekhar, has declared assets worth 55 crore rupees. Bureau Report, India Today. Interesting battle there in Thiruvananthapuram. Let's take you uh, to all our other top political stories at the moment. Uh, Starting with Aam Aadmi Party, where another Neta is in the ED net, Durgesh Pathak, who was ABS Goa in charge during the polls and is close to Arvind Kejriwal. He and Arvind Kejriwal's PA, Bhivav Kumar, were grilled by the ED in connection with the Delhi excise policy case. ED alleging Pathak was involved in receiving kickbacks in the Goa polls. High drama unfolding outside the election commissioner's office in Delhi today after Trinamool Congress MPs were detained while protesting, claiming misuse of central agencies by the BJP. The TMC is claiming that the BJP's Jitendra Tiwari met with a top NIA official a day before the agency sent notices to TMC leaders. Sources telling India today that the Congress High Command will decide shortly whether it's uh, whether Rahul Gandhi will also fight from Amethi after the only after the Vyanad polls are over. Remember the polling there takes place on the 26th of April in Vyanad. Smriti Rani targeting Rahul Gandhi and said people of Vyanad seem more faithful to Rahul Gandhi uh, when questioning Rahul Gandhi's loyalty to the voters of Amethi. Uh, the battle for Hyderabad has intensified. BJP candidate Madhavi Lata has got Y plus security cover after she alleged death threat. She mocked her Lok Sabha election rival from Hyderabad, Asaduddin Ovesi, accusing him of being friends with gangsters, ISIS and the King's group. A Lingayat seer, Dingaleshwar Swamiji, has filed his nomination from Karnataka's Dharwad constituency to take on BJP's Prahlad Joshi. The Swami claims that Union Minister had engaged in maladministration. Okay, let's turn to today's election ground report, which comes from West Bengal over the issue of the Matwa community and the Citizenship Amendment Act. The act now rules that uh, people have to sign affidavits along with documents issued by the governments of Pakistan, Afghanistan or Bangladesh before they can claim citizenship. Now the Matwas who are hoping, Bengali Hindus from Bangladesh who are hoping to get 
that citizenship are worried because uh, the entire process of documentation is taking time. Anirban Sina Rai brings you today's ground report from West Bengal. Thakur Nagar in North 24 Parganas is two and a half hours away from Kolkata. This sleepy town is where the Matua Mahasangha traces as its home, away from home in Bangladesh. Three lakh voters of Matua community voted overwhelmingly for the BJP in 2019 for its citizenship amendment promise. Two years later, in the assembly election, Many from the Matwas turned away from the Lotus as CAA seemed a distant dream. In this election season, three years later, CAA is a reality, but Matwas are confused and agitated. CAA wants them to provide documents from Bangladesh that many have never bothered about. <laughs> They all have Indian identities and for generations, have been enjoying government benefits. The Navasudras in West Bengal constitute 17.4% of the total SC population. It's the second largest in the state after the Raj Panchis in North Bengal. Matuas belong to the Namo Shudra community and in a poll season, they are an important vote bank. Most people we spoke to in the Matua community are the de facto citizens. Those who have managed Aadhaar card, voter card, PAN card, ration card and other identity documents issued by the Indian government already. Thereby prompting the most obvious question, what is the use of CAA for them? And how will this play out in the Lok Sabha polls? With camera person Argo Ghosh, Anirban Sinaroy, for India Today, Thakur Nagur. And we'll have stories from across the country in our special show, Elections Unlocked. Lots to look forward to, including a special interview with the former Madhya Pradesh Chief Minister Shivrat Singh Chauhan, who's contesting in the Lok Sabha elections this time. All of that at 10.30 p.m. Meanwhile, I've had a rather busy weekend because we are kicking off elections on my plate from this week, every Friday, 9 p.m., and then repeats on the weekend. Our first episode comes from the state that's going to the polls in the first round the fascinating state of Tamil Nadu. I look forward to you watching that show. For now, all I can say is Nandri, thank you for watching. Bye for now. Good night. Shubhratri, Jai Hind, Namaskar. Election on my plate this weekend. Bye for now.